In 1998, during the TRC, it was confirmed that apartheid South African government was responsible for the failed coup in the Seychelles during 1981. They wanted to overthrow the Seychelles government and return to power ex-president James Mitchum, who was a pro-Western leader. He had been taken out of his position by Franz Albert René in the 1977 coup. The man tasked with this mission was a missionary by the name of Mad Mike Hall who was also known as a soldier of fortune or a gun for hire. He had made a name for himself in the Congo Civil War that took part in the 60s. Now for the Seychelles coup, Mike put together a team of soldiers, some from the South African National Defense Force and some were the reserves. Initially Mike wanted 5 million for the mission, but his backers or sponsors were not willing or couldn't put up that amount of cash. Instead, Mike only had $300,000 for the mission, which was not enough for them to properly prepare and execute the coup. On the 25th of November 1981, that was the day the coup was supposed to happen. Now due to budget constraints, they had to compromise some parts of their logistics. You see, they boarded the plane with their weapons hidden in the luggage. You see, during those times, this was before terrorists were a problem, so airport security was not as tight as it is now. They disguised themselves as a rugby team that was on a weekend getaway, and they were also gonna donate toys to the underprivileged kids in the country, allegedly. They hid the weapons underneath the bags where they had stuffed all the toys, trying to disguise the whole thing. As they arrived in the Seychelles airport, it looked like one of the bags had moved, and the nozzle of a machine gun was peeking out. A customs officer saw it and alerted the police. A gunfight broke out in the airport and one missionary was shot and killed and 44 of them managed to escape by hijacking an Air India plane and forcing the pilot to fly them to Durban. Close that door. There were suspicions that the South African government could have been responsible and those suspicions were confirmed when this government refused to cooperate and extradite these perpetrators. You see, at the time, South Africa was going through sanctions, so they didn't even care, I think. I'm not going to the Truth Commission. I am not going to repent. I am not going to ask for favors. What I did, I did for my country. Now, these guys had gotten away with it freely until aviation authorities threatened to ban South Africa from flying to other parts of the world if they didn't do anything about the hijacking. That's when the government changed their minds and they charged these guys with hijacking, but not treason. They spent about six months in jail and Mike, as the leader, was sentenced to 10 years, but he only spent about three years in prison. There, there were a lot of problems in mounting this coup. They were trying to change the government in the Seychelles. But if you ask me, the fundamental cause of the failure was not enough money. You can't do that kind of thing on two or three hundred thousand dollars in, in those days. Mike's original plan called for five million dollars, but nobody had that kind of money. And in fact, Mike himself funded a certain amount of that coup attempt because he believed so strongly that um, the world did not need a socialist government mm -hmm. in the Seychelles which was so well placed to monitor uh, events in the Indian Ocean. Mm. So unfortunately it went wrong within the first day of getting there and, and they were then um, charged for hijacking a plane. Now, why was Mike chosen for this mission? You see, Mike was a decorated soldier who was born to Irish parents. He joined the British Army in 1933, and then when he retired in the army, he became a qualified chartered accountant. And then that's when he came to apartheid South Africa in 1948. You see, apartheid South Africa was good to a lot of white settlers. When he got here, he ran a couple of businesses, but he still missed the action and the adventure of being a soldier. Now, in the 1960s, that's when he got an opportunity to go fight in the Congo Civil War against the rebels. He had a team of about 300 soldiers or missionaries across the Congo to fight a communist rebellion against the government. 
they managed to save about 2,000 nuns and priests and it is said that they almost captured Chekhova who was there helping the rebels. Look, I'm not sure if it's true or this is kept. Now, the Civil War was also a battleground for the Cold War between USA and Russia. You see, America was backing the government. They wanted to control the government in the country so that they can get what they want, which is the minerals. And Russia was backing the rebels, the locals who were standing up to the puppet government that was controlled by the Americans. Now, Mike was fighting on the side of the government. You see, what they were fighting for, America and Russia, they wanted a mineral called cobalt. Cobalt was a mineral that was used in weapons systems and also in the rocket systems that was used in the space race of the 1960s. Now, Mike and his team of the five commandos had a movie made about them called The Wild Geese that came out in 1978. You see, the Seychelles coup happened seven years after Mike had left the Congo. Now, after Mike did his three years in jail, he left South Africa to go cool off in France and then he returned back to South Africa in 2009. And Mike died in 2020 at the age of 100. Well, 64 was a whole different thing. Um, the communist rebel rebels had taken over two-thirds of the country and America could see it was going to fall into the hands of the Russians. And the interesting thing is, if the Russians had got the Congo, according to the American view, they would have then had control of pretty well all the world's supply of cobalt, uh, which is used in missile systems, weapon systems, and above all, the space race. So America would have lost the space race.